I've decided I'm going to build myself a little wood burning stove for here in the garage. I do have a 220 volt electric heater that I use in here, but you know, when it's 8 or 10 degrees out, it's really struggling to keep up on those days because, you know, I don't have the garage insulated yet. Yet. Plus, electric heaters cost quite a bit to run. So, wood burning stove, why not? You know, I, I love the heat from a wood burner. So I was thinking about how I wanted to build it, and my first thought was to use a sheet of 3 16 plating and cut it down, make a square or rectangular box or whatever size. But I don't really feel like spending that kind of money on this right now. And then I remembered that I have that piece of pipe left over from the power grader build on the roller. That first one I tried to use had that flat spot in it. Um, so that'll be perfect for a wood burning stove. Who cares if it's got a flat spot in it, right? Then I was thinking I could run out to my friend's house where I have my POS winch bed stored and I can cut a couple chunks out of the flooring a bit, the decking, you know, a bit because I don't plan on using any of that. I just want the winch bed for the gin pulls, the winch, and the roller on the back. Um, the rest of the bed is in pretty bad shape, so yeah, might as well use the plating for this. Well, I just discovered I did not get the filming of cutting this pipe down on video. Not that big of a deal, but I thought I would show you how I made the thing, made a line on it square. That is, I rolled a piece of sheet metal in my ring roller and uh, put it around the pipe. Got it to where it was pretty good and square just by kind of eyeballing it, really about all I did. Did a little measuring to kind of double check things. Then just drew a chalk line around the band and then cut it out. Since this pipe has a big dent on this one side, a flat spot, I can't just use my circle cutting machine in order to cut this out. So um, I just had to set the pipe on top of the plate, reach down in there, and draw a line with the chalk, and then I'll just freehand it. my magnet plate here. This is actually a little wind generator I was working on like 15 years ago. Obviously never completed, but it works great as a holder plate. Oh, she made me a little better witness mark on it, I guess. Oh, there we go. That's it. And just like that. And it falls in there. Well, it's dark in here because I ain't got no electricity. See? Clicky, clicky. <laughs> but the garage is down to 42, 23 outside with 45 mile an hour wind gusts. I'm not even exaggerating on that at all. I got a lot of Interstate 70 south of me closed down. When they close I-70, it's, uh, it's a storm. Well, anyway, I was going to work on my wood burning stove today, but uh, apparently not. It's off over there somewhere. <laughs> I'll show you the outside world, I guess, here. That way you believe me. It's a snowing. It's a blowing. And it pays to wear a dust mask, people. That was a brand new one, fresh out of the package when I started. I also took the end plates to the sandblaster. Here, just give you a quick look of what one plate looks sandblasted and one's not. Having all that tread pattern on there actually turned out to be a real pain in the butt. Uh, as you can tell, I had like shadows and stuff and didn't get all the rust like I thought I did. 
But uh, it'll be good enough for the stove. It'll be rusted pretty soon anyway. My wife, daughter, and I spent a little while drawing out some designs and ideas and whatnot on how to go with the feet for this stove. I wanted to make the thing look like Perry the Platypus, but we decided that really wasn't feasible. And eventually we came upon the idea of simply making curved legs. Just take strap iron and roll it. And I discovered that the piece that I rolled to make the pipe a straight cut was a very good template. set underneath there. I did that uh, sometime earlier today. <laughs> I kind of like it. Um, obviously the rectangular tubing here is going to be yanked out from underneath of it. You know, the yellow piece is just kind of keeping the pipe from rolling off of there. But this concrete is completely sloped and crooked and out of square here in this corner. It looks like to me it slopes down to the garage door here. This is the garage door. So I'm guessing it's done on purpose, you know, so all the water and stuff will run back out of the garage. So I'm going to actually have to spot weld all the legs on in place right here so it sits level. Get this thing sitting right, you know what I'm saying? Because if I just put the legs on over here on the workbench and then set it down over here, it's going to teeter-totter and rock everywhere. I'm just trying to figure out how far away from the wall I want it and how far away from that wall I want it. I got uh, almost two feet behind it. I know it doesn't look like it. Now, it's actually two feet from that tarp to the back of the stove there. But I've only got 12 inches between the stove and the wall over here right now. And I'd like a little bit more than that, I think. i got to put on this plate. I need a square tubing for a spacer here. And we'll go for it. flipper flapper works. All right, now we'll flip this thing up and I'll go ahead and weld the back side in. I'm playing around here with how I want to make my door in this thing. I was originally just going to make this entire plate hinge out, but I decided I didn't like the seal on it very well. Then I was going to make a square door in there, and I thought, no, nah, that really wastes a lot of space. So I'm going to go with a door that is square up on top. That way this top part will help keep the smoke from coming out. You know, that'll hang down a little bit. And then this bottom, that will allow me to, you know, get a log in there a little better and clean it out and stuff like that a little easier. So it'll be two frames like this. One frame will be this way, the other frame, the angle iron will sit like this over it. 
So just figuring that all out and making a whole bunch of miters right now. When I moved here, I found this wrench in the yard. I've actually found a lot of tools in the yard. I got it to work good enough that I can get it on this old bolt that I have laying here off of something I did for a customer. And uh, it's actually a self-locking nut, too. You can see the dimple on it maybe right there? I don't know. But anyway, I'm thinking I'm going to weld that onto there, put a hole in here, and use that. For the latch for the door. I actually set the bolt up just a little bit so I could weld and it wouldn't interfere. And it's recessed down in there a little bit. I was looking around at a whole bunch of stuff I had trying to figure out a good way to hold this in place and latch it. And then I saw this pair of pliers in the same pile. I had this wrench in because I also found this pair of pliers in the yard. So, uh, I think I'm going to use them. These things are junk. I tried using them a couple times and yeah, they're worthless. Absolutely worthless. That would be pretty darn cool. I'll take the rubber handle off or take the rubber off the handles, but I think it was going to the whole dang thing right there. that a lot. <laughs> that actually makes me chuckle. Oh. Yeah, I think the stove turned out pretty good considering it's all junk. So this actually puts pressure on the door. It actually falls down in there and keeps the door tight. That's That couldn't work out better, man. That's <laughs> oh, That makes me laugh. Did you see the stove? Did you see the new stove? Over it. The only thing left to do now is put it over against the wall and put the exhaust pipe on. That's pretty cool. I'm happy. For some reason I didn't record setting the stove pipe in place for its final time. But here's a little footage of me test fitting it before the stove was actually done.
there is a nice white beach of sand. Woohoo! I don't really like using fire bricks, and of course, in a round stove like this, fire bricks are about impossible. Sand is just so much easier to use. It'll basically turn to glass after a little while. It, you know, conforms perfectly to the stove, and if you end up having to clean it out and replace it, no big deal. But when you clean out the ash, you'll know you hit the sand because that top layer just turns to glass. If y'all want to know how I build a fire without using any accelerant, just using wood, I have a link to that video on the end screen. Fires, cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess that ends this video here. Uh, thanks for watching, y'all. And, uh, yeah, well, you'll be seeing this in the background of pretty much all my videos now. Nice. Oh, I can already feel the heat clear over here, and I don't think it's just my imagination. goes the sun. There's all the jets landing at Denver International.